Hi there, welcome to part two of my Walther's Superliner review. As you can see, these are the new, uh, the brand new uh, ones, just brand new this year, I'm pretty sure, um, produced ones. Not only are they faithfully reproduced in the lovely paste, um, phase three paint scheme, but they are chrome plated as well. So they have this wonderful sort of metallic sheen to them, which just makes them look ever so much more um, realistic. It's terrific. And they look great going along the track, particularly on really well scenic layouts. Now, um, in part one, we saw the coach baggage, coach and dining cars, I think, and, uh, and, and also the repeater baggage. These are the lounge cafe, the observation car, uh, and two sleeping cars. So we'll have a look at those today. This one is probably the most attractive one on the train. I think it was designed to be that way. Uh, this was designed to be the kind of hub of um, activity on, on the whole train. This is where you spend your most of your time because you just get such fantastic views. I've been on these and the views you get are basically, well, at least 360. You can, you can see pretty much all, all around you because these will offer you views straight up and a lot of the time in these on, on these long distance journeys you are actually going through very deep canyons so you do need these uh, extra windows along the top to see to see directly upwards um, just to get a, a sense of the majesty of the um, scenery that you're in anybody who's ever been on one will will, will know just what a fantastic view they, they offer um, I think these were the superliners they think they were built in the 80s but the original 70s, 60s or 70s Santa Fe uh, high level cars were kind of a prototype for this. Um, I think, if I remember rightly, Walthers are going to release, based on the popularity of these and on the popularity of their previous Super Chief line, uh, they're going to actually release the high level cars, which will be very exciting if they do. And I think they're going to do the same job of doing a, a chrome plated uh, sort of finish, um, which will be very nice. Uh, some of the high-level cars are still in service, actually, with Amtrak. One of them, actually, which looks a bit like this, they, it's actually refurbished, and it now operates as a Pacific Parlor car, I think it's called, on the Coast Starlight over in California. Um, so if, you, if you're ever on that train, basically that's a first-class only train, uh, sorry, a first-class only car, and it's kind of a bistro, loungy thing uh, uh, that you basically uh, sit in there and have a very nice drink of some sort while you watch the scenery go by. Not that you can't do it in the standard class lounges like these. So yeah, um, there's no reserv reserving seats on these. You basically just go and sit down wherever you like and you know just watch the scenery go by. I think the model is absolutely fantastic because I've seen models of these cars that look absolutely dreadful because they don't have any interior. I mean, part of the point of these is surely that if you if they if they offer such views, such such good views looking out, why shouldn't you be able to look in on a model? So yeah, you can see every single one of the seats. You can get an impression of just what a good view you get from one of these, from one of these cars. Now there is actually a small bar in the in the in the bottom here, so you can actually go down and buy. That's why it's called the. Uh, yeah, there we are. The oh come on, focus. Yeah, the lounge cafe car, which you can just about make out. The paint scheme on this one, as always, is extremely um, crisp. That really just doesn't want to focus. There we go. Yeah, look at that. That's just kind of perfectly put onto the body. Might be because I have, might be because I have such a strong light source just here. Um, so yeah, every little divot and piece of. Um, detail on the side of the car is just beautifully done. Even these little handrails are pre-installed. I mean, you know, I have to say when I was a kid I couldn't imagine having a, a model this nice. And for such a comparatively low price really, these were only, I think they were only about $40 each, uh, which is surprising considering how, how new they are. So anyway, this is kind of the best part of the train really. Um, this is where you spend most of your time looking out at the scenery. Um, I think my dad, when he was on the train, he was jet-lagged um, 
quite badly, he couldn't get to sleep. So he woke up very early and um, decided, well, I'm rather than tossing and turning, I'll go to the lounge car and see what the view's like. And he got to watch um, sunrise in the Nevada desert from one of these cars, and there was nobody else there. It must have been a magnificent sight. So, you know, that's the kind of views that these things offer. Um, absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, definitely 10 out of 10 for these from Wolfers. Good, good job doing, these, doing this one so well. Um, Cato have, have offered a line as well. I think they're great, the Cato ones. In fact, I was considering getting them, but it was the, um, uh, it was the chrome-plated uh, feature that really sold me finally on it. I saw one of these in a shop and I thought, oh, uh, I just have to get that. <laughs> so, here's the uh, last type of car. These two are both identical because actually I think typically a long-distance train has about three of them. I decided only to get two, but uh, maybe I'll get a third one eventually, um, if I can find one. So yeah, these are just, again, just absolutely beautiful. And I particularly like the way, uh, just next to the door there, you can see how, how nicely it's picked out. In fact, I haven't really shown yet just how nicely the, the actual Amtrak Superliner logo has been printed. Uh, come on. Focus, please. I've got you on and... Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, look at that. Just the way the the S curves around there. Everything's just been really faithfully reproduced. Um, so, yeah, basically, I think when we were on this train, we had a family room, and we would have been right in that window right there. In fact, I think I slept just inside that window. I was on the top bunk. There's bunk beds that fold down in these rooms. These rooms sleep four and everything else I think is either two or some of them, like uh, my grandparents were on the train with me and so they had a room that slept two here and another room that slept two there. And basically they had a partition across here so during the day they could actually open that out and they could have one big room with two big picture windows like that which must have been uh, very very nice. Um, so yeah, they've got kind of showers and toilets in the, in the uh, downstairs just there and then these are a couple more of the uh, double rooms and then that is a, a family four room you basically have this all the way to the other side of the train um, so on this side if you see this is all corridor just along here and then the, other, the whole rest of the train is all um, the whole rest of the car that's all bedroom space but on this one on this, this family room you actually get the full breadth of the car as, as it were um, so you can sleep a whole family. Um, yeah, my brother and I were both in the uh, both in the top bunks. My brother had the uh, top bunk on the other side, I think, and I had the top bunk here. Uh, and I have to say, I think it's probably still, even though it was just over ten years ago. No, I think it must have been eleven years ago. But yeah, it's still the best night's sleep I have ever had on a train. Uh, well, it's the best night's sleep I've ever had. Period. I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, um, oh, I, now that I think of it, I think there is actually a slight difference between the types of superliners. I think there is actually a superliner one and a superliner two, because they ordered them in they ordered them in two batches basically. What the differences are, I couldn't tell you without looking it up. So basically, if anybody knows, then comment or something if you can be bothered. If not, I think they're they're relatively small details, so you're not going to see a huge difference. Um, but it's there if you want it, I suppose. Uh, yes. So, yeah. Uh, I think that pretty much sums it up for this train. The other one, as I say, is absolutely identical. Uh, and I will at attach extensive running videos to this, um, to this video. So you'll get to see these in action. And stay tuned in the future to see these with all lighted and painted um, installed. All, lots of nice details and figures and, and so on. So, see you next time. Oops.